Right, um, I thought I'd redo the, um, the video I did a couple of years ago on the components of this machine. Um, it's going quite nicely now. It's taken me quite a while to um, sort everything out. But um, there's a few things I would have done different, differently if I'd have redesigned it. For a start, I would have um, brought this uh, face out 40 millimeters here and buried this 40 millimeters into there to give it a wider stance to um, um, make it more stable instead of the high leverage effect I've got down this end a long way away from the, the headstock. The other thing I'd do, uh, the only other thing I'd do is to make it a slant bed. Um, I've had a few problems over the years with um, especially water-based coolant getting into the, uh, the linear slides and I, I figured that uh, if I used a slant bed approach most of the uh, swarf and everything would fall down or into the, uh, the tray here and, uh, and less would get up here. Anyway, uh, what do we got here? We've got a NEMA 23, I've forgotten how many ounce inches it is now, but uh, it's powerful enough with a 16 millimetre um, uh, lead, lead screw, a ball screw, walnuts buried under there somewhere. It's running on uh, 20 millimetre linear rails with, uh, um, with appropriate uh, linear bearings. The same rails are used on the Z axis. Um, down here, uh, you can see, you know, get in close there, you can see where that one actually swelled up because of corrosion, but it seems to be still working alright. Uh, over the years I've had to increase the power of this Z-axis uh, motor here, it, uh, during threading in particular, it didn't have enough oomph. There's my anti-resonance uh, flywheel, works really well now. Uh, this arrangement here with the big brass sleeve is a, a stuff up. Uh, I actually broke the uh, the uh, lead screw, the 20 millimeter lead screw uh, down in this area here in my uh, attempt to undercut the thread. Uh, I made the, the uh, cross section was only eight millimeters, silly thing to do, and eventually it twisted off. So what I did was I made a new uh, extension, put a much bigger bearing in it and a much bigger bearing block and put that uh, uh, inch and a half uh, sleeve over the end of it. Because of that I've lost a little bit of Z travel but it doesn't really matter because I've never done anything long, I only do short stuff. So, um, But the clamping arrangement has fixed the problem at the lowest possible cost otherwise I would have had to get a new uh, lead screw. Okay, what else have we got? We've got a bit of a, 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 a splash back there that I, I knocked up. The uh, dent down there was my attempt to give some clearance by whacking it with a hammer. I had a clearance problem at one point in time. Uh, another thing I'd do if I rebuilt this machine would be to push that splash back back. Well, probably about another inch to give you another inch of clearance. Um, okay, um, there's the front panel. I finally got round to re-engraving the, uh, the front panel. Uh, I really should paint it and infill it to make it look a lot nicer than it is, but it works okay. Uh, my coolant arrangement up oh, under there. A coolant tank there and it recycles through this tray, this incline tray that I've got here and goes back I don't have enough light but it goes through a little strainer down there and back returns back uh, the old Dell laptop that controls everything via a USB port uh, this cantilevered arrangement was the thing that came with my soil mill uh, I never used it on the mill but I found it was handy to, to bolt on the laptop onto here and run all the cabling through that tubing and down the back. Um, 
Here we have the uh, rear bearing arrangement. It's actually a uh, double row of angular contact bearing rather than a um, tapered roller bearing that's used in the original lathe. Uh, three quarter horse, sorry, yeah, it's one horsepower, three quarter kilowatts, 750 watt three phase motor running from a variable frequency drive. The control for the variable frequency Danfoss drive is, is there and remoted via this cable that goes down into the control box. What do we got in here? Here we go. Yeah, there's the variable frequency drive down the bottom. The, the Danfoss thing works absolutely brilliantly. I love it. Um, there's a um, immediately above that there's a 12 volt come 5 volt dual supply for powering most things uh, except for the, the stepper motors above that is a 500 watt 48 volt uh, uh, power supply it's good quality uh, mean well one I've had a bit of trouble with the Chinese one so I've stuck with the Taiwanese mean well above that is my Relay block, where there's the emergency stop relay, coolant relay and on off power and a few other bits and pieces. There's a little printed circuit board there which um, controls, it's a rectifier for the little on off circuit and um, uh, I forgot what else, it's, it's something else too, I can't remember, it's been a long time. Uh, immediately above that there's the Z-axis uh, stepper motor controller and above that is the X-axis stepper motor controller. You can see I had to go up a, a size to be able to get the power they need. Smooth stepper integrated into the uh, C23 breakout board down there. And the cabling disappears out the back from the stepper motors to the to, to the stepper motors from the drivers. This is my this thing here. Right, there we go. Is uh, the USB port that comes in and goes to the smooth stepper. I'm using an old um, plug-in for the smooth stepper. I find it works better than the later ones, uh, for me anyway. Right, what else have we got? Okay, in the back here there's the power in port and the USB port. Below that is a, uh, a D15 connector that runs the uh, signalling up to the front panel. And over there, that mess of cables is the, the power going to the stepper motors and disappearing down the back there. Uh, yeah, the belt is uh, one of those power twist belts. It's it's great. It's uh, the only way you can go with uh, with the um, spindle pulley inside the headstock. You never get a standard belt on. Um, yeah, I've got a bit of a damper there. That was my early attempt to get rid of some vibration. I don't really think it does anything. But uh, underneath the block, there's a an adjustment for the belt tension which consists of a 12 millimeter hex rod tapped um, left and right hand thread at each end and uh, it works brilliantly so uh, that's oops what happened there no oh, i backed into one of my grinders that's basically it inside the shed Huge fan gets up to uh, quite a high temperature in here. There's my uh, temperature gauge. I don't know whether you can see it or not. Yeah, she's been up to uh, around about 47 degrees centigrade in here, and it's the lowest temperature. I don't believe that for a second. <laughs> minus 25. There's no no way in a creation of cats would have got it down to minus 25 here. I don't know what happened there. Uh, typically it would get down to maybe um, zero, maybe minus one, maybe minus two in this uh, latitude. 
done a lot of work on that machine there. Uh, digital readout is absolutely brilliant. Had that for about 10 or 12 years. Here's my new, um, or relatively new manual lathe I use. I um, do a lot of work on that. It's got a digital readout. My previous one was a good, accurate little Chinese machine, exactly the same size, same spindle, same tool. And I ended up uh, giving it, giving it to my son. Um, I don't think he's used the damn thing. Uh, here's the computer and controller for my little soil mill. Make a lot of parts on that. It uh, works great. It looks like I've got it set up for engraving at the moment. There's a Dremel bolted onto the side where I did some engraving recently. So that's about it for now.